Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Schulz. Today we have another Japanese folktale. This one again comes from Green Willow and other Japanese fairy tales. And in this story we have an origin story. We get to find out why the jellyfish is as he is. And it's it's an interesting convoluted story and one that is absolutely worth hearing. This is The Jellyfish Takes a Journey. Once upon a time, the jellyfish was a very handsome fellow. His form was beautiful and round as the full moon. He had glittering scales and fins and a tail as other fishes have, but he had more than these. He had little feet as well, so that he could walk upon the land as well as swim in the sea. He was merry and he was gay. He was beloved and trusted of the Dragon King. In spite of all this, his grandmother always said he would come to a bad end because he would not mind his books at school. She was right. It all came about in this wise. The Dragon King was but lately wed when the young lady dragon, his wife, fell very sick. She took to her bed and stayed there, and wise folk in Dragonland shook their heads and said her last day was at hand. Doctors came from far and near, and they dosed her and they bled her, but no good at all could they do to her, the poor young thing, nor recover her of her sickness. The dragon king was beside himself. Heart's desire, he said to his pale bride, I would give my life for you. Little good it would do me, she answered. How be it? If you will fetch me a monkey's liver, I will eat it and live. A monkey's liver? cried the dragon king. A monkey's liver? You talk wildly, O light of mine eyes. How shall I find a monkey's liver? Know you not, sweet one, that monkeys dwell in the trees of the forest, while we are in the deep sea? Tears ran down the dragon queen's lovely countenance. If I do not have the monkey's liver, I shall die, she said. Then the dragon went forth and called to him the jellyfish. The queen must have a monkey's liver, he said, to cure her of her sickness. What will she do with the monkey's liver? asked the jellyfish. Why, she will eat it, said the dragon king. Oh, said the jellyfish. Now, said the king, you must go and fetch me a live monkey. I have heard that they dwell in the tall trees of the forest. Therefore, swim quickly, O jellyfish, and bring a monkey with you back again. How will I get the monkey to come back with me? said the jellyfish. Tell him of all the beauties and pleasures of Dragonland. Tell him he will be happy here, and that he may play with mermaids all the day long. Well, said the jellyfish, I'll tell him that. Off set the jellyfish, and he swam and he swam, till at last he reached the shore where grew the tall trees of the forest. And, sure enough, There was a monkey sitting in the branches of a persimmon tree, eating persimmons. The very thing, said the jellyfish to himself. I'm in luck. Noble monkey, he said, will you come to Dragonland with me? How should I get there, said the monkey. Only sit on my back, said the jellyfish, and I'll take you there. You'll have no trouble at all. Why should I go there after all? said the monkey. I'm very well off as I am. Ah, said the jellyfish. It's plain that you know little of all the beauties and pleasures of Dragonland. There you'll be happy all the day long. You'll win great riches and honor. Besides, you may play with mermaids from morn till eve. Well, come, said the monkey. And he slipped down from the persimmon tree and jumped on the jellyfish's back. When the two of them were about halfway over to Dragonland, the jellyfish laughed. 
No, jellyfish, why do you laugh? I laugh for joy, said the jellyfish. When you come to Dragonland, my master, the Dragon King, will get your liver and give it to my mistress, the Dragon Queen, to eat, and then she will recover from her sickness. My liver? said the monkey. Why, of course, said the jellyfish. Alas and alack, cried the monkey. I'm grieved indeed, but if it's my liver you're wanting, I haven't it with me. To tell you the truth, it weighs pretty heavy, so I took it out and hung it upon a branch of that persimmon tree where you found me. Quick, quick, let's go back for it. Back they went, and the monkey was up in the persimmon tree in a twinkling. Mercy me, I don't see it at all, he said. Where can I have mislaid it? I should not be surprised if some rascal has stolen it, he said. Now, if the jellyfish had minded his books at school, would he have been hoodwinked by the monkey? You may believe not, but his grandmother always said he would come to a bad end. I shall be some time finding it, said the monkey. You'd best be getting home to Dragonland. The king would be loath for you to be out after dark. You can call for me another day. Sayonara. The monkey and the jellyfish parted on the best of terms. The minute the dragon king set eyes on the jellyfish, Where's the monkey? he said. I'm to call for him another day, said the jellyfish, and he told all the tale. The dragon king flew into a towering rage. He called his executioners and bid them beat the jellyfish. Break every bone in his body, he cried. Beat him to a jelly. Alas, for the sad fate of the jellyfish. Jelly, he remains to this very day. As for the young dragon queen, she was fain to laugh when she heard the story. If I can't have a monkey's liver, I must needs do without it, she said. Give me my breast brocade gown, and I will get up for I feel a good deal better. And that is The Jellyfish Takes a Journey, in which we learn how the jellyfish became jelly. And while I don't condone the beating of harmless, although stupid, fish, I love this story because Every now and then, you see something or a creature in nature, and you really have to wonder, how did it get to be like that? How did the jellyfish get to be the jellyfish? And you can imagine when one is wandering about and first trying to decide on the mythos of why, and you're getting things in order, you're getting trees and mountains make sense, and you can think of stories for nearly every animal, and then you walk down to the seashore, and on the sand, or in the surf, you see a jellyfish, and you're just, I don't know. It was a normal fish that got beaten. I love it. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. You can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you'd like to support the podcast, you can head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject where for as little as one dollar a month, you can get early access to every story told. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>